In this video, we'll be going over how to estimate your life insurance requirements, which you'll be working on in the homework, and I'll also go over some of the Excel tools available to you for life insurance. So in your Learn Smart, the first method you read about was the easy method. This is based on the insurance agent's rule of thumb that a typical family needs around 70% of your salary for seven years before they can adjust to the financial consequences of your death. In other words, for a simple estimate of your life insurance needs, you just take your gross income, multiply by seven years at 70%. So the next method, the DINK method, is where you'll have dual income, no kids, that's what the DINK acronym is for, and it assumes that your spouse's earnings are as much or more than yours. And so what you'll do is you'll take all of your debts and divide it by half, and then add in the funeral costs that you need to cover. The next method is the non-working spouse method. So insurance experts have estimated that extra costs of up to 20,000 a year may be required to replace the services of a homemaker or stay-at-home parent with small children. So it'll take the number of years of your youngest child to reach the age of 18. Things to note is that if there are teenage children, that figure can be reduced. Or for children under 13 or with poor health or special needs, that figure can be adjusted upward. The fourth method is the family need method. So while the first three methods assume that you and your family are typical and ignore factors like social security and your liquid assets, this one requires diving deeply into all of your insurance needs. It considers things like um, employer provided insurance, social security benefits, income, and assets. So let's go ahead and look at some problems. In this first example, we're going to be using the easy method. You are a wage earner in a typical family with $40,000 gross annual income. Using the easy method, determine how much insurance you should carry. So here's the formula for our insurance need. It's our gross annual income times the seven years at the 70%. So I'll go ahead and plug in my 40,000 for the income using my seven years and 70%. When I plug that into my calculator, I'll get $196,000 for the level of insurance that I need. Next is the DINK method. You and your spouse are in good health and have reasonably secure careers. Each of you makes about $40,000 annually. You own a home with an $80,000 mortgage. You owe $15,000 on car loans, $5,000 on personal debts, and $4,000 on credit card loans. You have no other debt. You have no plans to increase the size of your family in the near future. Assume funeral expenses of $10,000. Estimate your total insurance needs using the DINK method. Now in Learn Smart, it showed you where you would look at each of these items here and divide them by two and then add them up. Another way you can do it that might be faster is where you add up all the debts that are listed here and then divide by two. So when I add up the mortgage, the car loans, the personal debts and credit card loans, I got 104,000 for the debts and then I'll divide that by half because right here it says half my debts. So the 104,000 divided by two gives us $52,000. So whichever way you prefer, dividing each of these separately, then adding them, or adding them all together and then dividing by two, you'll end up with the same number. Now our funeral costs were estimated at 10,000, so we'll go ahead and add that 10,000 to the 52,000 of our debts in half. That gives us an insurance need of $62,000. Here's the non-working spouse method. Sean and Anita are married and have two children, ages four and seven. Anita is a non-working spouse who devotes all of her time to household activities. Estimate how much life insurance Sean and Anita should carry. So here's the formula for our insurance need. Recall that it takes the age of your youngest child and subtracts that from 18 and then multiplies that by $20,000. So the youngest child in our story here is four. So we'll go ahead and plug that in, 18 minus four. And then we'll multiply that by the 20,000. So 18 minus four is 14. And 14 times 20,000 gives us $280,000. Here's another problem using the DINK method. You are a dual income, childless family. You and your spouse have the following debts total. Mortgage of 200,000, auto loan of 10,000, credit card balance of 4,000, and other debts of 10,000. Your funeral costs are estimated at $8,000. Your spouse expects to continue to work after your death. Using the DINK method, what should be your need for life insurance? So again, uh, you can do it one of two ways. You can either take each of the debts and divide them by two and then add them up, or 
You can add up all your debts. Here I'm adding the mortgage, the auto loan, credit card, and other debts. So I get a total of 224000 Then I'll go ahead and divide that by 2. Again, here's the half my debts. So I take that 224k, divide by 2. That gives me $112,000. And then I need to add in my funeral costs of 8000 to my half of the debts. And that'll give me 120 k for the insurance need. Here's the non-working spouse method again. Using the non-working spouse method, what should be the life insurance needs for a family whose youngest child is 10 years old? Here's our formula. We'll plug in the age of our youngest child in. So 18 minus 10. And I'll take that value and multiply it by 20,000. So here we'll take 18 minus 10 gives us 8. And then multiply that by the 20,000. That gives us 160,000 for our insurance needs. You also learned about surrender charges, so here's how we'll calculate it. Sophia purchased a variable annuity contract with a $25,000 purchase payment. Surrender charges begin with 7% in the first year and decline by 1% each year. In addition, Sophia can withdraw 10% of her contract value each year without paying surrender charges. In the first year, Sophia needed to withdraw $6,000. Assume that the contract value had not increased or decreased because of investment performance. What was the surrender charge Sophia had to pay? So the formula that we're going to use to find the surrender charge is the withdrawal amount minus, and in parentheses, the free withdrawal percent times the account value. And then we'll take that whole amount and multiply by the surrender charge. So plugging in our numbers, the withdrawal amount here in the first year was $6,000. The free withdrawal percent, so the amount that she can withdraw without paying surrender charges, is the 10% here. For the account value, which is the $25,000, and then we'll take all of that and multiply it by the 7% uh, surrender charge right here in the first year. So simplifying, I've taken my free withdrawal percent of 10% and multiplied it by the $25,000 account value. That gives me my $2,500, that there's no penalty. And then I'll subtract that from the withdrawal amount that Sophia did in her first year. And that's what I'll multiply the surrender charge of 7% against. So taking 6,000 minus 2,500, we get 3,500. Multiplying that by the 7% surrender charge gives us a surrender charge of $245. In terms of mortality and expense risk charge, here's another example. Shelley's variable annuity has a mortality and expense risk charge at an annual rate of 1.25% of account value. Her account value during the year is 50000 What was Shelley's mortality and expense risk charge for the year? So here's our formula. We're just going to take the fee rate and we'll multiply it by the account value. So taking our 1.25%, multiplying it by the $50,000 for our account value, we get a mortality and risk expense charge of $625. Uh, in the slides here, I've also included a helpful exhibit that compares the major types of life insurance. There's term, whole life, and universal life and some of the characteristics around each one. So if this is something you're examining for yourself or for your family, um, this is a quick summary of the different types of life insurance, including the disadvantages and some options to be aware of. Also here are the different types of annuities that you should be aware of that you might be interested in getting. Um, and then also be aware of the cost of annuities. We did two examples on the surrender charges and mortality and expense risk charge, but there's also other administrative fees that you should be aware of when looking at annuities and other fund expenses that might um, underlie the investments. So looking at the Excel tools um, that I've posted in Canvas, uh, this worksheet here will help you determine your life insurance needs. It's a nice checklist where you'll have to think about the potential expenses and you'll just plug it into the light gray cells here, such as your final expenses around funeral, estate taxes, um, etc. Now, for instance, um, in my family, we have purchased uh, plots in advance for our um, aging family members. So that wouldn't necessarily be covered under final expenses. But if you don't have that purchase, that might be something you also want to consider um, in your final expenses. Um, here's the consumer debt amounts, any emergency funds or college funds that you want covered. Uh, if we scroll down, some living expenses, what's the average living expense you want, uh, spouse's income after taxes, uh, annual social security benefits. Um, when you plug those in, it'll give you a net annual living expenses. 
uh, years until your spouse is 90. So whatever age um, your spouse is, take 90 minus that age. So for instance, my partner is 37. So I would take 90 minus 37 and plug that in here. So then looking down below in the investment rate factors, um, make sure you read, these are the years until your spouse is 90, not their age, how many years. Uh, and then you'll use the factor, whether it's a conservative investment or an aggressive investment that you wanna plug in right here. And then in the gray boxes here, it will calculate based on the numbers that you insert above. You'll also want to um, include any current investments that'll get subtracted out of that. And then that'll give you your total life insurance needs. So this is a uh, more detailed process of trying to figure out how much life insurance you might need. And then on the second tab, it'll look very similar to some of the comparison worksheets you've seen before in previous chapters. This is a helpful checklist or comparison sheet for you to shop around and look at different life insurance policies. Um, it will allow you to write down the types of insurance, um, the amount of coverage, what are the frequency of payments, the premium, and any other, other costs or rate of return or benefits that the insurance agent or ad uh, has mentioned. So th this will allow you to compare side by side um, the different policies you are considering. So if you have any questions at all, just let me know.